Hello again, people of YouTube. This is the Reverend. The theme here. And Grey Mouse One. Uh, the three middle-aged guys, or three middle-aged dudes just bullshitting about nothing. And we're going to revisit an old topic. We are actually going to talk about the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, uh, <laughs> that I, wish I, had, I, I wish I had positive energy to ride into this particular one. Um, this is what happened. April 11th, the beginning of this week, on Game Informer, they published an article entitled 10 Questions and Answers about, final, about the Final Fantasy VII Remake because they had a chance to sit down with the producers of Final Fantasy VII. Uh, excuse me, uh, the, the producers over there at Square, Square Enix were actually working on the Final Fantasy Remake. Um, and a lot of details came to light. Um, let me go ahead and actually share with you right now what the the actual article looks like and point out some of the parts that were really troubling as a result okay so this is gameinformer.com uh like i said 10 questions about and answers about the final fantasy 7 remake there they have girly looking cloud um they have their intro thing, and the first few things that they ask is that, you know, uh, fluff questions. You know, fans were looking for the Final Fantasy VII Remake for, for years. What changed that made you say that now was a good time? And uh, their whole thing was like, yeah, the, the guy who was who, – the, the producer who was working on, Final, on the Final Fantasy VII Remake, which is, I believe – let's see here um, – Oh, shoot. Where's his name? Oh, Yoshinori Kitase. All right, okay. He's the executive producer in charge of the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Mm -hmm. uh, he went ahead and he, he started answering questions. He was like, yeah, this I, – I did, I did the 13 series of the development over 10, 10 years, uh, and I really needed to, to move on to something new. Um, you know, of course, the, the funny thing about Final Fantasy XV – that was supposed to be part of the 13 series of games. They went ahead and they split it off into something else. And I, I don't blame the development uh, team for feeling a little bit of burnout. They decided to go off and do other things. Okay. Now, this is when it starts getting interesting. They asked, when the remake was first announced, there was some confusion among fans about its multi-part format. Is comparing it to Final Fantasy 13, the Final Fantasy 13 saga fair in that regard? Will each entry level have that kind of scope? Okay. And then he answered, it will essentially be a full scale game for each part, for each part of the multi part series. In 13, each installment told the story from a different angle. It's kind of like approaching an unknown territory in a sense. Whereas with Final Fantasy VII Remake, we already have a pre existing story. So it really wouldn't make sense if that isn't but encompassed in the multi part series. And it wouldn't make sense to re remake it if we don't encompass that entire story. With regards to the current HD capacity and volume, the idea is that we wouldn't be able to encompass it all in just one, in one installment. So if we're just looking at each of these parts, one part would be on par with the scale of a Final Fantasy VII game. All right. For everybody who thought, <laughs> like ourselves, that they were they were saying multiple installments like episodic games like uh, the Telltale games you know The Walking Dead uh, mm -hmm. you know um, what what else uh, Game of Thrones The Wolf Among Us or even Square Enix own um, what is that Life is Strange where everybody was thinking hey they're gonna give us an episode for like ten dollars a piece and it's gonna span like maybe a few hours we wait a month and then we see another one. Basically, he just shit all over that idea. This is a reason why that's the case. He mentioned Final Fantasy XIII Saga. The Final Fantasy XIII Saga, and I remember it being announced back in 2005, 2006. I was there at E3 when they, they went ahead and they unveiled the, the footage and, and everything else. I was sitting there in the Square Theater. Um, they called it Final Fantasy Thirteen, the final Crystallis no, uh, Fabula Nova, or something like that, right? Nova. It Nova. was, it was going to be three 
parts of Final Fantasy 13, and then there was going to be the Final Fantasy Versus series, okay, which ended up turning out, turning into Final Fantasy 15, okay? They were going to have five fucking games all under the Final Fantasy 13 banner, okay? Guess what? All of them cost full fucking retail price. Mm -hmm. All of them have their own fucking DLC. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they're going to go ahead and apply that same market structure to the Final Fantasy VII Remake. So the folks who are hoping to only have to wait, you know, maybe ride the wave out for six months to a year and part with around $60 of their hard-earned cash, maybe a little bit of DLC orders here and there, Square Enix went ahead. They came out. They're like, um, "Sorry, but fuck you." And that's not happening. Well, with that, right? Um, Final Fantasy VII, the original game. I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Was three discs. Yeah. Um, now, so and the majority of that was video, full motion video. Absolutely. So. And, you know, they've already said that they're going to tweak the storyline, this, this, and this, right? So, ultimately, you know, I'm paying $60 times three in order to, to get the complete Final Fantasy VII remake experience. Hold that thought, though, because here's the thing. All right. Uh, Wait, I, there's more. Yes, indeed. There's, there's, there's more. more. The, 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 the scary part about that is this. Um, they Kitase was asked the question so have you decided how many installments there will be <laughs> yeah we have no idea on the project side in terms of how many installments it may consist of, but unfortunately we can't share that at the moment of course as we're creating and developing <sighs> the scenario of the stories these are things that move in real time so the plan may change along the way. But that said, we do have a vision of how many installments it, it will consist of. Well, I'm glad they do. <laughs> there will be seven. I've... I don't think I'm it's... Gonna, it right now. I, I don't think it's going to be that damn many. But the thing is, though, if they're going to charge me, us, gamers, $60, full price for a freaking part one or whatever, it better be freaking 40 to 60 to 80 hours. Being a Final Fantasy is 60, 80 hours to complete the game 100% with, a, you know, side quests beside, you know. But anyway, I, I don't see it going for seven. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I don't. I, I, I mean, why are they just closing this? Yeah, I mean, because – the, the scary thing about it, and let me go back to sharing that fucking article. <laughs> uh, all right. Is that they, Wait, you know they're they're yes. they are talking me out of getting the Final Fantasy VII remake is what's happening here. Okay. One of the things that they mentioned is that, uh, let's see here. Uh, after the, how many installments, uh, the guys at Game Informer asked, the compilation of Final, Final Fantasy VII added new wrinkles of story and lore behind the game. How is the team approaching the integration of those new elements into the remake? When they're talking about the compilation, they're talking about uh, Dirge Cerebus, uh, Final okay. Fantasy Crisis Core, all the other spin-off games. Okay, so this Final Fantasy remake is not just going to encompass the core three fucking discs on. Let's see here. Where are you? Where are you, motherfucker? This motherfucker. All right. They are going to try to encompass and squeeze in everything in the uh, in the Final animations? Fantasy compilation. All right. The games and the animations. What's Come up? On. No, so so you're telling me that they're gonna squeeze in from the anime and the games and they're trying to squeeze all this on top of the Final Fantasy seven original storyline. Uh no, I think mostly mostly the games that they publish. Like like I said the stuff from like Dirge of Cerebus and also uh, Crisis Core, all right? The actual games, the other games that were attached to Final Fantasy VII. Okay. So what, Zack's gonna be a freaking playable character? Or they're gonna, they're gonna address him. He's gonna, he's gonna have a chapter someplace. Got to. Yeah. You know, otherwise it wouldn't make sense. No. 
I mean, and, and look, that bitch better die. That's all I got to say. But, but no, she'll wait. Die, but she'll, you'll, wait, 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 there's more. Yeah, okay. she'll die, but no. you'll, Phoenix, you'll Phoenix Downer. Okay, all right. Okay, let's see here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> here's the thing. All right. Um, okay, not many creators have the chance to revisit a previous title like this. For you personally, is there any aspect of, of Final Fantasy VII that you're looking forward to bringing back to life? <sighs> okay, and they ask again. So even if you're familiar with the story, is there still a, an opportunity to surprise? And his answer was definitely. <clears throat> we have archived versions of our games, and a lot of times people buy them and it starts off with nostalgia. But after that, you're essentially following the story you already know. That experience starts to diminish as you proceed through the game, and the interest level starts to decline. If it's just nostalgia, it's just a matter of following the story. And there wouldn't be any surprises. So in that case, we want to balance out, out, out the areas we would like to change versus the areas we don't in order to have that nostalgia, but also the surprises. Do you see the larger iconic plot points as an opportunity to surprise fans, or are there things that you and the team consider untouchable? I, along with Nomura-san and Kashi, uh, Nojima-san, were involved with the remake, were involved with the original Final F Fantasy VII. We were the people who created it. So in that sense, we don't think anything is untouchable. That isn't to say we're changing everything. What I don't understand about this is that motherfuckers are still rushing out there to go ahead and line up and pre-order this piece of shit? Well, no, Wait, no. I said that out loud, didn't I? Yes, yes I did. One thing is that Aerith dying is part of the plot. Uh, that, it, that, it, wait. You're going to have to change. Look, hang on. Before You're going to have to change like two discs of information, of storyline, if she survives. It doesn't all, matter if they're going to sit there and make it like three or four fucking full games. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. What I was about to say is just simply this. There are remakes and remasters of games all the time where they don't change the fucking story. Yes, there'll maybe do, be a director's cut where they put extra shit in. But if for something like this, they just want it remade in today's graphics. They didn't want a total ramp of the game. Yes, you because you change the story, then it's not Final Fantasy VII anymore. Mm -hmm. It's something else. Or... If I mean, I agree with him. Him. Wait, wait, if if Aerith is the one that kills Sephiroth at the end? Well, you know, I agree with the... And the, sacrifices the, herself? I, I agree with... Uh, with the, <laughs> I, I, I can't even fucking say that with a straight face. <laughs> I, I agree with the publisher, right? I mean, I understand what he's saying. I, I kind of understand that... that um, if it's a remake, or a true remake, remake. But that's then, what they uh, wanted. No, I know. But he's saying that, you know, you'll play it for a couple of hours and then the nostalgic, it's just only natural that your nostalgia will wear down and it'll just come to a, to a grind. But I think what the, I think what the producer is, is forgetting is that just like you said, um, theme people didn't want a rehash of the story. They didn't want anything added to the story. They just wanted the experience, Final Fantasy it. They wanted to keep everything intact the way it was, the way it was released back in 1997. Now, for them to add, I mean, it's nice that you had these other, you know, Crisis Core and all these other background stories, prequels and, and sequels of Final Fantasy VII, but to to take that and just cram it into the game on top of the original story and and display or and sell it as five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirteen, forty freaking copies uh, this is is just people didn't ask for that. And again, I, I have to say this again, you know, I've said it in my previous videos, you must always be careful for what you ask for. Because you may get what you asked for, but you would also have all this bullshit in between. And that's what it's turning into. Because, I mean, when I first, I mean, we've all seen the trailer. 
We've all seen people crying when this was announced at E3. People were in tears, along with the Shemu 3, but people were in tears. They're like, finally, we've been asking for this for so long. Now you're taking us completely, you're taking us completely out of that, and you're telling us, no, don't worry, don't worry, everything's gonna be here. And then you're then you're going against those, you know, a month or two months later saying, yeah, nothing's untouchable. We we decided that to make the game the best game of Final Fantasy VII, we're going to add all this to it, take away from this, add this, because we – no, you're, you're, you're losing people. I, I'm one of them. I mean, I'm not going – you know, if this keeps up, if we don't, we don't know how many discs there are going to be, I'm just going to freaking wait. I'm just going to wait until they all came out, you know, and then I'm going to buy it on a bargain bin for thirty dollars, so or twenty dollars because you're gonna you're gonna change the, the way this article reads. You're gonna change so much of the original context of the game. It's not even gonna be Final Fantasy VII anymore. Quick question: What if some of those things you can only get digitally? That's like the DLC. They did not. They did not say it was going to be disc or physical. They have not said that. They've kept tight lips on that. That's a valid question. It's a valid, and it very well to me. It would make more sense to be digital because you can update it easier that way instead of mass producing discs. And I didn't think about that until here recently. Until they started saying it's going to be episodic, and it it I. Season pass, Final Fantasy VII Remake, 150 bucks. More like 180. Yeah. 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 If oh, you're 150 for well, discount for those that's who just saying, early. That's just saying if it's three discs, that's $180. Yeah. That, that's it. But if you're saying seven, that's $540. People it, will be insane enough. Wrong. People will it be insane enough much. to pay that. It, it's too much money. I could buy a medium in computer for that much. Fuck and that. Give me an arcade cabinet. I could play a Final Fantasy VII the way it's supposed to be played on the original disc for that. I could buy a PlayStation and about 30 copies of the original game. Okay. For that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to say something that's either going to get us a lot of fucking downvotes or, or, or a lot of hate commentary. All right. <laughs> um, I'm not scared of downvotes. Look. All right. People, Final Fantasy VII, it did something great for the JRPG market. It broke it out from being a niche market in the United States. And it broke it wide open so that other titles could go ahead and Mm -hmm. bring themselves over here to the States, all right? But you can also trace the failure and the decline of the JRPG, JRPG genre as a whole with the rise and decline of Final Fantasy. Mm-hmm. Final Fantasy as a whole is the most overrated fucking RPG series on earth. It has 15. It's final it's oxymoron. Way more than that. It the point? Final oxymoron. Look, Adam Sandler made, made a shitload of movies. He's not the best fucking comedian out there, okay? Final Fantasy VII is not the best fucking RPG out there, all right? And the reason why they're going to be there, they got it in their dumb fucking heads that they even got a chance to go ahead and pawn this shit off to you is because you've been climbing around, you know Final Fantasy, you know Final Fantasy, I want to go ahead and fuck with the camera, I want to go ahead and fight the up. give me one wing angle. Fuck! That's the reason why this is happening, people. <laughs> Look, I will admit, when I purchased my PlayStation 1 originally, all right, there were a few things that I had in mind. I wanted Tekken 2, and I wanted Final Fantasy 7, all right? Okay. Guess what? I bought Final Fantasy 7, and then a week later, I also bought Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Yes. I finished Castlevania Symphony of the Night. I played that most, multiple times. I haven't finished Final Fantasy fucking 7, all right? Damn. And the, one of the bad parts about it is that I was surrounded by the fucking drones and sheeple who couldn't fucking shut the fuck up about it, all right? 
And I couldn't get away from it. How the fuck was I going to, uh, you know, enjoy the story when every fucking five minutes I turned around and I, one of my coworkers or one of my buddies or somebody on fucking line. And this is back in 1997 when fucking online wasn't all that big in people's homes. We're talking about, oh, oh man, I cried when Eric died. Oh, did you see what happened? Clown, we got stuck in the live stream. Uh, Fuck, no, it's not that good of an RPG. In fact, if you break the words down, role-playing game, there's no actual role-playing in it, okay? <laughs> now, one of, the part, one of the things about Final Fantasy VII, and you people got to thank yourselves for this, is that one of the reasons why all of Square Enix's subsequent Final Fantasy games have not been so original and have been so fucking lackluster and so lacking in actual content and quality story is because they keep trying to go back and replicating what the fuck they did with that goddamn game. All right? When, guess what? The majority of you, that was your first fucking RPG that you even fucking played. Okay? Right. You went ahead and you saw really pretty CGI graphics because you decided to go ahead and put fucking Madden down for two minutes. And you, okay. yeah. Guess what? This bullshit is your fucking fault. Well, okay. I mean... That's it, what I got to say. End it, of the sermon. It's the... Uh, it, you know, there are so many better Final Fantasies. I mean, you got Final Fantasy VIII, which is so great. Many better RPGs. So many better role-playing games. Yeah, yeah I was getting to that. I mean, you got you got all these uh, different art. Star Ocean comes to mind. I love that game. That's a JRPG. You know, you got uh, Bravely Default. That's a JRPG. Look, if um, if if the Final Fantasy staff, all right, the amount of fucking resources, the A plus resources of Square Enix were actually broken off and were able to work on other fucking projects other than something that doesn't have the words final or fucking fantasy in the game, maybe Square Enix would have a, a great huge fucking library of alternate titles that they can go ahead and turn around to. But no, the only fucking thing that, that seems to make, uh, make any fucking money is Final Fantasy. Even when they go ahead and he mentioned Final Fantasy 13 as far as, you know, one last, uh, one last, it's actually the last big fucking console uh, release. And that's 10 years of fucking tripe and walking down fucking hallways. All right? Sounding like a coconut when she walks. But anyway. <laughs> but um, they, Square Enix or Square, Square Soft, whatever they're called nowadays, they need to take lessons from Atlas. I mean, look at the games that Atlas has. Look at the wide variety of games atlas has some may not be some you may not like some of them but you like others you know it's not final uh, square enix it's just they're stuck on final fantasy and it's going to continue to go as long as people keep buying final fantasy it's it's not that they are stuck on final fantasy everyone else is stuck is uh -huh. stuck on Look, final yeah, I, guess, if, I guess that's better if the fans as a whole would sit there and just like Think of this as the Square Enix equivalent to the WWE, okay? If the fans as a whole sat there and said, hey, well, this is the same old bullshit you've been feeding us for the last fucking decade. We're not going to go ahead and patronize this shit. You think Square Enix would go ahead and actually keep on pumping this shit out? No! All right? Well, see, one thing that you got to take in consideration, though, is that, yes, in the Western side, in the Western world... Yes, you know, however, in Japan, Final Fantasy is the top fucking JR, well, RPG. Uh, in, I mean, for Christ's sake, I lived there for 20 something years. What and, else is there? Well, you got Star Ocean. You got other. No, no, no. No, no. no Here, look, what happened what the is that it's big fucking competition ended up jumping into their fucking. Exactly. This is what the Reverend is saying. This, this is what the Reverend is saying. Square Enix had a lot of more. They had a lot more weapons, yeah, that they could fucking use. They had more RP, even RPGs. A lot more of them that they could fucking make. Yeah. Chrono Trigger, anyone? You know, there yeah. used to be a point in time where if Square Enix made something besides an RPG, that it was actually really fucking good, and people were looking forward to it. Exactly, but Is now when you mention Square, Kingdom Hearts, I mean yeah. that's that's Square Enix. 
But the thing about it is, once you mention Square Enix, you immediately think Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy, yeah. And, <laughs> yeah for most, and for the most part, you think of Final Fantasy VII. And even though Final Fantasy fans and fanboys would have a big ass argument about which is the best Final Fantasy, you know, e- either it's yay or nay on Final Fantasy VII, but VII always gets fucking mentioned. Yeah. And now, since they're going to be doing things this way, and things could be changed, or or maybe you have to pay two hundred dollars for the full fucking game, uh, as much as a fucking console, or are they going to throw any VR shit in it? We don't know. Or you get PlayStation Move and and camera and all that shit. Summon, you know, Phoenix down. If they do that shit, <laughs> I'm telling you. They most likely will probably do something like that. But people were on Final Fantasy VII's nizzisms for just about two fucking decades. And you couldn't go anywhere as a gamer without fucking hearing it. I remember Final Fantasy VII was the equivalent of Titanic the movie. They came out basically at the same time, and you couldn't go anywhere without hearing that Celine Dion shit, or you couldn't go anywhere as a gamer without seeing Final Fantasy. And then Final Fantasy VIII, and then Final Fantasy IX, and a full motion video, full motion video, full motion video. I'm like, look, just get to the fucking game. Get to the fucking story. But they're, now they're going to extend the story. They're going to change the story around. Aerith is going to kill Sephiroth at the end and kill herself. I don't know. We 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 don't know. That's the whole thing. And the, but they've look the from the get go. Or Cl- oh, okay. Wait, have Cloud Killer then? Well, the the thing that the thing that a lot of people have to realize from the get go, Square Enix pretty much said, "Hey, look, you guys won the a Final Fantasy remake, an updated version. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make it." And right when they they started out, the next sentence with, "It's gonna be multi part." everything was going to be fucking changed. Nothing was going to be like what they originally remember about that 1996 fucking release. All right. Or 1997 fucking release. 97. All right. The, you know, it's, it's almost 20 years old now. Okay. Nothing was going to be like that. Right when they, right from the jump. Okay. People yeah. still held out hope. A lot of people were fucking smiling. But, but the thing about it is certain people were just like, oh, no, they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't change everything. They wouldn't, they wouldn't fuck up the whole game in the story. No, they have to keep that shit the same. They wouldn't do that. Uh, yeah, they would. <laughs> yeah, they would. Uh, that's, that's, that's the thing. Uh, I mean, again, I'm – the funny thing about this is that uh, – I, I don't – I really don't feel like – after thinking about all of this and I've let all of that out, I really don't think that Yoshinori Kitase, the producer of the Final Fantasy VII Remake, the creative guy behind it, okay, I really don't think he's doing anything wrong, all right, because he's giving fans exactly what the fuck they're asking for. Yeah. You know, they wanted more of it. Guess what? They're gonna have multiple fucking full price games for it. Okay, that's ah, it's it, it is what it is, and I'm 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 not on that train. You know, I'm 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 not on the on the rail to Midgard. You know, that's just how it fucking is right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, funny how this totally overshadows. World of Final Fantasy. You know, here's the thing. After Final Fantasy VII hit, every JRPG had to be like Final Fantasy VII in order to be successful. That's this is the worst thing that a lot of people have not considered. Okay, and a lot of people don't talk about. All right. In order for a triple A, considered a triple A fucking JRPG to come out, they had to go ahead and invest exorbitant amounts into 
heavy CGI, elaborate cutscenes, all this sort of shit. Okay. And it turned a lot of the art on JRPGs for, from whatever little role playing that was left was, you know, meted away to make space for a high def fucking video. All right. Mm -hmm. For really pretty, uh, you know, CGI cutscenes. You know, if you want, if you want a fucking example, just fuck. Even from around the same era, I, I, you know, and and you know, it's it's a good thing that the producer went ahead and he, he separated himself from Square. But fucking look at look at Xeno Gears, all right, from the PlayStation One. If they had the same fucking resources as Final Fantasy VII, you wouldn't have to worry about spending fifteen minutes reading through fucking walls of text. All right. And then hoping that you didn't miss the two fucking sentences that actually told you where to fucking go next. <laughs> All right. Huh, some people complain about quick time events. Well, you got I mean, Final Fantasies have always been like that. You know, even back in the original days, Final Fantasy 1 through 3 and 4, 5, 6, they, they've always had, in fact, some of the, they added the gameplay that you could actually learn a word and then you could like repeat it back to another uh, um, uh, NPC and it flows the storyline. So um, I'm not, if, I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe that we just need a Final Fantasy that goes back to the 8-bit type of gaming would would probably, or they just need to say, look, We've done Final Fantasy one through fifteen, and then like spinoffs for fifteen or for thirteen, spinoff for ten, um, spinoff for twelve. I think maybe I'm wrong, but maybe it's just time to 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 to, to bury that horse because it's been kicked to death. That horse. No, people people still go head over heels and celebrate when a Final Fantasy is announced, pretty much. And even if it's something that it looks not like not the same Final Fantasy as people would still give it a chance because it says Final Fantasy on it. Well, their, I mean, it is I, their cash cow. I agree with, uh, with what the Reverend said was that it's, it's wrong for Square Enix to um, make a, or for any publisher for that matter, is to model their RPG after Final Fantasy VII. That's definitely not Something hey, that would be a most role. fighting games modeled themselves after Street Fighter. Most yeah. most beat em ups model themselves after Double I'm Dragon fine. to a certain point. Yeah. yeah, but the thing is that there aren't there aren't there aren't fifty fucking titles out there connected to Final Fantasy in some form or another. All right, that this is the thing with, with, with the Final Fantasy games. All right, is that there were a lot of there were a lot of Final Fantasy titles as it was before Final Fantasy VII, all right? After Final Fantasy VII hit, up until this point, there's like, I think, mm -hmm. there's over 60 fucking connected titles. Well, um, one thing, too, is uh, like you're saying, Final Fantasy VII was the first Final Fantasy that introduced full motion video. Now, the um, other Final Fantasy titles that I, I thoroughly enjoy, especially my favorite Final Fantasy is Final Fantasy Tactics which still kind of involved, it still has Final Fantasy in it, but it's completely, completely different from any of the other Final Fantasies. Actually, I think the Tactics was, was more modeled after uh, uh, Ogre Tactics. Ogre, 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 Ogre Tactics, depending on which. So, I mean, there are Tactics that are not Final Fantasy games. Yeah. But they need it. They need to bury that horse. It's dead. You know, we're going to go up to 15, and there's no how many copies are going to be on Final Fantasy VII Remake. They just need to, they just need to quit. You know, I mean, they have successes with uh, 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 MMOs, you know, Final Fantasy XI and Final Fantasy XIV. Final Fantasy XI, people are still playing that shit. And you got Final Fantasy XIV, people are still playing that shit. From what I heard, it's actually good after the last, there's an update, there's a new or reborn whatever, and yeah. 
it's it's spectacular is what I've heard. But I just don't want to pay that fucking fee, that fifteen dollars War of Warcraft fee every month. No, I'm not doing that. Sorry. That's but, something that I just thought about too. What if that? What if you have to pay a fee to play it online or multiplayer? What? Honestly, it better not be a multiplayer. There's no reason for it to be a multiplayer. That's yeah, there is for motherfucker. Hey, we're living in an online age where it's people. It's not an MMO. I yeah, understand but they, that, but in that same they, article, they, like were, that. they were, and also another article in the printed uh, Game Informer thing. They they were very open about the fact that combat is based off of Dissidia, which is basically their Final Fantasy fighting game or action title. I thought it was more modeled after <laughs> Um No, they said that they, that they that they're modeling it more after Dissidia. Well, Final Fantasy XV is – they don't have turn-based either. So. Yeah. so, A lot of people are not going to get the game just on that regard alone, that it's not turn-based. Yeah. Well, no. A lot of, uh, it's not what – like I said earlier in this video, we're running out of time here. Yeah. So my closing thoughts is that – I told you guys to be careful what you asked for. Now you're getting what you're asked for, and now you're complaining. What the fuck? Yeah. Does that make any sense? Um, in this day and age, people still won't take responsibility. And that's exactly what this is. Uh, any thoughts, theme to close this out? Uh, yeah, I just leveled out. I I just gave my thoughts on it. It's just, oh. yeah, it's it's pretty. I, I wow, yeah. Look, here, here's here here here's how it is. All right. Um, uh, I am not on board the train to Midgard. All right. Um, and for the yeah, the for for the folks who 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 are, and if you're gonna go ahead and entertain that, well, expect more of it. Unfortunately, there's a reason why this is here in the in, in the market. All right. Especially yeah. if it becomes successful, yeah. expect more beloved franchises to run the same scheme. And okay. other companies follow suit. Come on, wake yeah. up. Yeah. That's the way it is. You know, I mean, I I could go on. I could really go on, but we've got less than a minute left. Uh, thank you for staying with us for the last uh, almost forty minutes, folks. Hit like, hit subscribe. You know. If you're so kind, we're three middle-aged dudes. I'm the Reverend. Dame here. And Gray Mouse One. Hey, Thanks. we want to read your comments, so please write Once them again, down. For the benefits of common sense, logic, and episodic bullshit gaming. Credits. Final Fantasy is over-fucking-rated.